The titans of America's oil industry have enjoyed an uninterrupted flow of profits until they produced an uninterrupted flow of oil into the Gulf of Mexico and onto the shores of surrounding communities. As the oil industry explained its mess to Congress today, the people on the shore scrambled on their own to try to clean it up. Please stay tuned. A mobilization of this speed and magnitude will never be perfect, and new challenges will always arise. I saw and heard evidence of that during this trip. So if something isn't working, we want to hear about it. If there are problems in the operation, we will fix them. Oh, pick me, pick me, pick me. Problems you want to hear about? There's plenty about the response to the BP oil disaster that is not working. And today, the CEOs of Exxon, Chevron, Shell Oil, ConocoPhillips, and BP America heard about some of those problems from Congress. All of those executives from the top five oil companies in the country were summoned up to Capitol Hill today to answer for what their industry has wrought in the Gulf. It ended up, ended up being one of those oddly satisfying days of congressional hearings when the stuff that ought to get asked actually gets asked. Asked stuff like, hey, oil industry executives, why exactly are you still using technology from the 1960s to clean up a spill in the 2000s? Now another picture, a picture I'm very familiar with, a picture of the boom used in the Santa Barbara oil spill in 1969. That was about the era of the rotary telephone. Now here's a picture of the boom used in the Gulf today, 40 years later. Do you see a big difference between the boom technologies used in these two pictures? I, I don't see a big change in boom technology. There have been tremendous changes in technology and how boom is deployed and how satellite imagery helps deploy resources into the best possible places. Yes, we do have satellite imagery now. But that was the era of the rotary telephone. We now live in the era of the iPhone. See, according to BP, it's okay to use 1960s era technology because now, because we have satellites and stuff, we're better at knowing where to put our 1960s era technology. That's like if we were still driving Ford Pintos and Corvairs that exploded on impact. But now, Ford Pintos and Corvairs have OnStar in them. So when they blow up, we know exactly where to find the smoldering wreckage. This current disaster obviously happened specifically to BP, but one of the things that has emerged pretty clearly since is that it could have easily happened to any of the top big five oil companies that testified today at least, including, say, ExxonMobil. ExxonMobil CEO Rex Tillerson was grilled by Congressman Bart Stupak today about his company's claim that they can handle a spill as large as 166,000 barrels per day. If you can't handle 40,000, how are you going to handle 166,000 per day, as you indicate? The answer to that is when these things happen, we are not well equipped to deal with them. So when these things happen, these worst case scenarios, we can't handle them, correct? We are not well equipped to handle them. There will be impacts, as we are seeing. When they happen, it is a fact that we're not well equipped to prevent any and all damage. There will be damage occur. There will be damage occurring. We need to freeze frame. Stop this. Stop with this. Stop. Leave that guy there. This is one of those moments. This is important. Append this to every deep water drilling application. Append this to every complaint about the deep water drilling moratorium. Append this to every politician who says that what we really ought to be doing is continuing to drill. Here it is again. Here's the oil industry. Here's the CEO of ExxonMobil admitting they have no idea what to do when things go wrong. When these things happen, we are not well equipped to deal with them. We are not well equipped to handle them. There will be impacts, as we are seeing. When they happen, it is a fact that we're not well equipped to prevent any and all damage. There will be damage occur. While it is comforting to hear the oil industry admit out loud to what we've all been seeing the evidence of, it is, again, cold comfort to the people who have to live with the consequences of that horrible truth. Those are the people in all of the coastal communities who are now watching the oil in the Gulf of Mexico surge toward them. The people who are trying to figure out on their own how they can try to save their communities because they effectively are 
on their own at this point. What's happening in these Gulf Coast cities and towns right now is an ad hoc invent things as you go. Let's play MacGyver desperate, locally driven, invent your own salvation effort to try to keep the oil offshore. It's people in these communities essentially having to come up with something, anything to try to prevent the oil from ruining their land and their livelihoods. We have been trying to give this admittedly local story some national attention on this show. Today, there was a big article about it in the New York Times, about what the Times described as chaotic efforts to contain and clean up the oil in the water. I'm hoping that maybe that big article and some of what's been going on in Congress will help give this part of this story some more national gumption in terms of the coverage. But up until now, this, this innovate on the fly effort has received the most coverage and the most in-depth coverage at the local level, at local news, at local news affiliates. And there ha has been some truly amazing local coverage. Check, check some of this out. In Jefferson Parish, leaders are going ahead with the plan to use barges to stop oil from entering Barataria Bay. The plan is to use barges and rocks to close off these five entrances into the bay and its estuaries. 16 barges have already arrived, with at least 100 more expected by next week. Area leaders hope to sink them alongside one another at major passes where Gulf waters flow into coastal Louisiana. Orange Beach is taking matters into its own hands to protect Perdido Pass. To protect Perdido Pass, crews are now working on a $4.6 million steel pipe boom plan. It is a 36 inch pipe filled with foam so it will float. It has a, a vein on the top of about 18 inches. It has a keel on the bottom of about 18 inches. So it will afford us about three feet, two and a half to three feet of protection from the top of the surface. It's rigid so that it will stay in place. A new tool is hitting the beach in Grand Isle, Louisiana. Sand sifters usually clean beaches of cigarette butts and bottle caps, other debris like that, but now they're being used for oil. The machines pick up oil-soaked sand, sift it, and leave behind clean sand. The machines have been used to clean up oil in Saudi Arabia, but this is the first time they've been used on American soil. Sand sifting, never been used before here. Sinking barges to be physical barriers against oil. Steel boom that they're inventing, testing, and deploying. These are local mayors, local councilmen, county officials trying to do the work right now that the oil industry hasn't done since the 1960s. Since, as Lois Cap said, there were rotary phones. This unsafe industry, which has created these disgusting messes, have basically said to local communities, you guys are on your own. You figure out how to prevent our oil from destroying your town. We're working on oil, other stuff and, and counting our money. This isn't just shortfalls in technology either. What's going on in these local communities is also the result of BP not caring enough to use the technology that does exist the right way. Today, officials in Pensacola, Florida reported that the booming effort set up to keep the oil out of Pensacola Bay failed. Quote, oil has been able to get past a large V-shaped boom stretched across the pass. Booming isn't great. Booming is old technology, but booming done right, done professionally and carefully and tended well, which takes a ton of manpower, should have been able to protect Pensacola Bay. In the current setup we have in this country, the oil industry has everything going in their favor. They get all the gains, all the profits from this incredibly lucrative industry. And the risk is always ours. It's our American beaches that get doused in oil. It's our American marshes that get ruined when something goes wrong. It's our American industries that get destroyed when the places where people make their livelihoods are polluted and made toxic. So for us citizens, us non-oil executive citizens, those of us who don't profit from the oil industry, big disasters like the Exxon Valdez, the Ixtoc, the Buzzards Bay spill in Massachusetts, the Prudhoe Bay spill in Alaska, the seven spills after Hurricane Katrina, all of the spills after Hurricane Ivan, the spill in Salt Lake City this past weekend. For those of us who don't profit from this industry, these are big deals. These are sort of landmark events in terms of our relationship to oil. But get this, this is something that I learned today watching the congressional hearing that I did not expect to learn. For oil industry executives, even the biggest accidental blowout ever, 140 million gallons of oil spilled into the Gulf of Mexico, even Ixtoc, even that is apparently not a big deal when they think about their own industry. It's not part of what they've learned about oil and oil companies and drilling. It's not something that they talk about. It's not a term they're familiar with. It's apparently, if you're the head of an oil company, if you are the CEO of an oil company, it's apparently something you've never even heard of before.
I was reading an article about a well referred to as IXTOC1, which I think was back in 1978 or 79. Are any of you familiar with the history of that particular well blowing in the Gulf? Any of you aware of the facts of that? Yeah, we didn't edit that to take away the sound. That's them. They just blank stares all around. So if you're counting on the, on the oil industry to self-police in response to big disasters, you just look at the blank, unknowing faces on these guys and tell me that you're still counting on them. An enormous disaster like Ixtoc is apparently not something that gets discussed in oil executive circles. The fact that they spill oil disastrously doesn't even register on the radar for these guys in terms of what they do. And this is why we have government regulation. We care because it's our land, our sea, our country that they're destroying. In the oil industry, these disasters apparently don't even, don't even make a wave. They don't even register.